Hey, what is up guys? My name is Stan and welcome back to another video. So in this one, I'm gonna be talking about how to successfully bend metal tubing. This is actually a part uh, two of my two part video of my experiences with metal tubing and water cooling with metal tubing. In the last one, I did uh, some attempts to bend metal tubing with, uh, what was this again? This is Bits Power, the Bits Power um, brass metal tubing, but the problem was the metal was too soft, the plating was too hard, and ended up crinkling a little bit. You can see here the, um, the wrinkles and whatever, so just the material was not strong enough. So what I actually ended up doing was I went on eBay and bought a bunch of stainless steel tubes from, uh, I guess, a random seller that's out of China. So uh, they took about a month for them to ship here. So what the, I bought was a bunch of 12 millimeter tubes with one millimeter diameter, as well as some 12 millimeter tubes with 0.5 millimeter diameter. And we'll talk about the differences here in a moment. But basically, you can see here, I've done successful bends, and I've been able to tube up, oh, this is actually a work in progress here, but I've been able to tube up several of these runs here, so I've got a pretty good feel about these metal tubes now. So, now first thing I wanna talk about is actually how to cut metal tubes. Now, you've probably seen tubes like, or tools like this. This is just a metal tube cutter. However, in my experience, this tool is just not strong enough or not beefy enough to be able to successfully or easily cut uh, stainless steel tubing. It's great for copper and it's great for brass, which it was able to do pretty, a pretty good job on the Mayhems, or not Mayhems, but Biz Power brass tubing, brass copper tubing. But when it comes to the stainless steel tubing here, what you really need is something like this. This is also a rigid uh, tool cutter, but you can see here, it's got three rollers. Oh, can I get it to focus, maybe? You can see here, it's got three rollers, uh, actually six rollers, my bad. Uh, three in the front, three in the back. And it's got a hardened pin to be able to cut that stainless steel. And the disc is bigger too, so um, it's just more heavy duty. It's easier to do the turns. It's a little pricier, but if you're really gonna be doing stainless steel runs, highly recommend gra grabbing something like this because this thing makes it a breeze to cut. So all you do is you open this thing up and this spins really, really smoothly as well. So I'll make sure to link this in the description down below if you're looking for a tube cutter. But basically what you do is, you know, you, you tighten it so that the blade touches uh, the tube now make sure you don't put any additional pressure or much more pressure because uh, What you'll find is if you crank it down too much You'll actually crush the tube even if it's stainless steel even with a one millimeter wall thickness and you know One millimeter wall thickness is actually pretty darn thick if I could get this to focus here um, It's actually not a thin wall thickness, but in any case here what you do is you tighten do a rotation tighten again do another rotation and do, tighten again and do another rotation. Or you can actually spin the tube if you want. So do a little spin, tighten, do another little spin. Uh, what you'll find is the entire rotation is a little bit more difficult. And then once you, you know, go back to the, do the 360, it'll be easy again because it's no longer cutting. And what you'll see is it'll start doing an indent. And what it's essentially doing is it's pushing material to the side and doing the cut. It's not actually removing any material. It's really just pushing, pushing it to the side. So, um, you know, just a little bit more, tighten a little bit more, then a little bit more. And then you get to a point where it cuts all the way through. And there you go. So the end result is something like this. And you can see here at both ends of the cut. Now, if you recall, this tubing is one millimeter thick. So what you see here, this is clearly more than one millimeter thick. So 
you can see the difference here, right? This is much thinner than this. Uh, essentially, you've got a big wall of material here, and there's two ways to deal with this. Uh, one way is to use sandpaper and you can grind it down. Uh, that's what I was doing initially. But what I've found was, uh, because of the way you're cutting it with the blade, you're basically the outside is very, very smooth. And, and, and what I mean by that is it's really, really smooth. Um, you really don't have to worry that much about you know, inserting and cutting O-rings because the outside has been kind of dulled away. What you really need to worry about is actually the inside and the inside is kind of sharp. So what you could do is grab a tool like this. This is, I think this is called a reamer tool. It's also, um, I, I bought it as a set with my cutter. So again, I'll make sure to link everything in the description down below. But basically what this does is you can see it, there's a little, little sharp point where you can point it in, do a couple rotations. And just like that, you've basically cut out the inside or you've smoothed out the inside so that the inside's safe and the outside is safe as well. Now, uh, if you flip it around from this side to the other side, uh, there's an inverted you know, chamfer, cutting edge, deburr, whatever you want to call it. So you could do that as well. I, I really don't find the need because again, the outside is very smooth already. So just like that, you can basically insert this into your fitting um, like so. So these are Bits Power Black Sparkle fittings, uh, 12 millimeter OD. Um, depending on what you have, you could probably use all sorts of other fittings, but you can see here on the inside, can you see here? On the inside there is, you can see the tube is still a little bit thicker than the inlet opening. And, and what that is, is essentially that material, as you made that cut, that material has been pushed in. So if you really want to go to town on it, you can, you can, you can shave that off so that basically the ID of the tube, the internal diameter of, whoops, come on, come on. So the, the internal diameter of the tube is the same. Uh, that little bit, I'm not too worried about. It's all good. Now with this cut, you can build your entire loop with just straight tubing, that's fine. If you want to take it to the next step and bend the tube, what you'll need is something like this. Uh, this is also a rigid tool. Uh, I swear, I'm not sponsored by them. I just, they just make really nice, nice tools. <laughs> so this right here, this is uh, the 612M, um, the rigid 612M, it's the 600 series. Um, 12 millimeter metric. You might remember in the last video I had like a 412M or something like that. Uh, that tool was was just not heavy duty, duty enough for stainless steel tubing. It's really meant for thin walled uh, stainless steel or uh, brass or copper tube. So that's why I actually ended up picking up this. And this is a little bit more more premium, hardcore, heavy duty, whatever you want to call it. So all you do is you open up the tool, you open up the latch, and then you clamp it in. So now with this clamped in, you can see here, it's clamped in, and you have the 0, 90, 180, right? And from here, depending on if you want to make a 90 degree bend, all you do, is you basically just grab this and you start pulling down like that. And then you go a little bit past 90, let's say like 93 degrees, just because of the bounce back. And, and then that's your 90 degree bend. You can actually go a little bit further. There's a little feature on this specific tool that allows you to go all the way to 180 and you can just keep on pushing and pushing and pushing. Unfortunately, I don't actually have enough material to be able to do that 180 bend. The tube is too short, but you can see here, if I take this thing out, that uh, have, was, I was able to make a 90, maybe a hundred degree bend here, a little bit more than 90 degrees. So there you go. Uh, the stainless steel tubing is intact. It is not crushed. There are no wrinkles in the material 
and everything looks good. So what I found is one millimeter wall thickness stainless steel tubing with uh, 12 millimeter OD works the best for me. I did also purchase, like I said, 12 millimeter OD, uh, 0 0.5 millimeter ID stainless steel tubes. Uh, these tubes, they still don't have enough wall thickness or wall strength. I was hoping maybe stainless steel was stiffer than say bronze or copper. It is true, but I still ended up crushing the tubes here a little bit. You can see, oh, don't focus on me, focus on this. There you go. So there you go. It's still doing a little bit of crushing because there's just not enough wall thickness or wall strength in this tube. So 12 millimeter, half millimeter diameter is easier to cut. It is easier to manipulate. You can feel that it's a little softer. It's not gonna, it's not gonna you know, bend because it's stainless steel, right? It's three or four stainless steel. It's still very stiff, but it's just not enough to keep it from crushing. So what I'm saying is you can cut it, you can use it on straight runs, they're great. But if you're gonna be doing bends or whatever, you probably wanna look into something like a one millimeter thick wall diameter. Uh, if you go up to like 1.5 or two, it, then the tube is just too thick. It, it's too difficult to deal with. So maybe, so I would stick to the one millimeter uh, wall thickness and uh, that I probably, that, I know that's true for 12 millimeter OD. Maybe it's true for 14 or 16 millimeter OD. I would imagine that to be true as well. Um, although the dynamics of having a bigger tube does change a little bit, but I don't think it cha changed all that much. So basically that's it. It's just a quick video um, of how to cut, bend, and finish off stainless steel tubing for water cooling. So you see here, I've got a few runs here. Um, in the next video, I wanna talk about this specific build, the way that I've tubed it up, my thinking. So if you wanna see that video, make sure to subscribe hit the like button and comment down below if you've got any questions about how to bend tubes. Anyway, my name is Stan. I'll see you guys in the next one.